themselves muted, that would be helpful. I heard some big tapping. Uh, I think I can mute people here too. Uh, where is that? Anyhow, um, at any, any rate, a map pack is a collection of maps that are used when Terrain Navigator Pro is offline. In other words, you don't have an internet connection. You have an, uh, 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 an internet connection that is not um, uh, reliable or always uh, present. So map packs is, is specifically, are specifically for that purpose. They really aren't useful for anything else. So if you don't use Terrain Navigator Pro offline, in other words, you're not going out to the field with a laptop and Terrain Navigator Pro and you might not have an internet connection, Map packs aren't for you. You don't need to be listening to anything about map packs because map packs really only apply to people who use Terrain Navigator Pro offline. And uh, then map packs, like I say, are areas that you have uh, downloaded. Uh, they can be maps, photos, any of the map types that are available in Terrain Navigator Pro for offline use. Once downloaded, map packs are used automatically. There are no tricks to activate a map packet they just happen okay um, they're just available terrain navigator pro you don't have to load them or do anything like that to, to use a map pack once you've downloaded them um, and they're also not project specific uh, I, I get this question quite often is that do i have to make a map pack for each of your projects no a map pack is pro project independent so it's almost like taking a printed map and sticking it in your backpack that's really what a map pack is. It's taking a physical map that, uh, or in, in this case, a virtual map and putting it so that you can have it when you're uh, not, uh, don't have an internet connection where Terrain Navigator Pro can get that map. Um, and just like when you put a map in your backpack, it doesn't matter where you're going, that map pack, that map is gonna be of the area that you've printed. It also doesn't matter when you are going, that area is going to, that map is that area. So it's, like I say, it's like taking a, a chunk of Terrain Navigator Pro's vast library of, of photos and maps and sticking it into your backpack, if, if you will, to, um, to use it somewhere else. Map packs in the, on the desktop or laptop uh, PC software are not usually used with the traditional USGS topo maps. The traditional USGS topo maps, the seven and a half minute quads that everyone's familiar with, those uh, quad sheets are downloaded and installed when Terrain Navigator Pro is installed. They don't, uh, they're always available, they're your baseline map. So uh, if you're using those maps and only those maps, you don't need to use map packs. They're already downloaded and they're already available for use. Map packs can only be used in areas where you maintain an active subscription. As you know, Terrain Navigator Pro has a subscription. And uh, as such, the, uh, the, that uh, subscription uh, must be active in the area where you're going to be using a map pack. So in other words, if you have the states of uh, Oregon and California, and you have an active subscription for Oregon, and you do not have an active subscription for California, you've let that lapse, you can download and use map packs in Oregon, but you cannot use them in California. So that are the kind of the basics of the overview of the concepts that we'll be going through with map packs um, and uh, that sort of thing. And I, what I will do at this point is pause for any questions if anyone wants to uh, chime in with anything I've discussed so far about the uh, concepts of map packs. Am I still on the first screen? Uh, this is a question. Yes, I am. I have not, uh, I, I'm about to go to uh, Terrain Navigator Pro. We'll go live to Terrain Navigator Pro in a minute. So just the welcome uh, slide is up. Any other questions? Again, as, as if you think of something, feel free to type it in and uh, we'll go from there. And we already have a question, and that is from Mr. Squire. If I download map packs when my subscription was active and my subscription has lapsed, are you suggesting they are no longer available? I am suggesting that. In fact, I am stating that. Map packs are not, uh, are, do require an active subscription. Sam writes, is map packs an additional subscription product? No. Uh, the map packs, the base subscription covers all of the basic functionality of Terrain Navigator Pro and is good for the year. So all of the base uh, 
functionality train navigator pro is good for the year and uh there's no additional fees for the, for using map packs beyond the the annual subscription for use we do have a couple of add-ons for train navigator pro the parcel data and uh, now the uh, sites add-on that add additional functionality and those are uh, different uh subscriptions but um uh, at any rate, uh, the base subscription is Map Packs. Am I going to cover Map Packs for Android devices? Yes, that's going to be my third uh, kind of section here. We're going to talk talk about Map Packs on the desktop in the basic form. Then we're going to do Map Packs uh, on the I shouldn't say desktop as much as laptop or PC. Then we're going to do Map Packs on the PC, uh, uh, some advanced uh, things. Then we're going to do it on the uh, mobile devices, Android and uh, iPhone. Okay. I think that's all the questions we've got so far, so we will continue, and I will bring up Terrain Navigator Pro. And here we are in Terrain Navigator Pro. Uh, I happen to be in the state of Oregon. It doesn't matter, of course, because uh, uh, actually I'm, I'm physically located in New Hampshire, for those who care. Uh, but uh, map packs, uh, you know, doesn't matter where you are. It's just a matter of bringing them up. So to make a basic map pack, we're going to grab the information tool. The information tool is the rectangle that's in the upper right hand corner of Terrain Navigator Pro, which is in the upper left hand corner. To see, it looks like a, uh, a rectangle. And that was a new tool that we added in GNP 11. Um, to specifically, uh, one of the reasons we added the tool was to make map packs. Now, once I hit that selection tool, it's going to make a, a selected area. I can adjust that selected area to anything I want. Just grab the corner, I can grab the center move it around. I can scale out if I wanted to scale out. Make it bigger. So let's go find an area that we want to make a map pack of. Let's see. This area over here looks kind of interesting. So we're going to grab this. I'll zoom in a little bit. So we see. Notice the uh, selection just keeps going no matter what I'm, uh, what I'm doing, and I've got uh, a selected area. Once I'm happy with the selection, I now pick the map type that I want to put in a map pack. As you know, Terrain Navigator Pro has, uh, I think I counted up to 60 different map types between the um, uh, various base types, the additions, and the merge combinations. So uh, with the exception of the traditional USGS topographic, if it's a map that you want to use when you do not have Terrain Navigator Pro online, you want to make a map pack out of it. So we'll use satellite imagery since that's a very common um, uh, thing that you want, might want to make a map pack of. So we've set that. And of course, I could pick an addition and a merge combination, but we're just going to stick with satellite imagery. Okay. So I've got to find my area of interest I've, by using the selection tool. I've defined the map type that I want in. And now I'm going to go to the file menu and I am going to choose save map pack. This is where you specify how you want the map pack to be saved on in your uh, library of maps in Terrain Navigator Pro. We can give it a name and uh, we're going to call this, uh, let's call it Oregon, um, uh, I don't know, uh, area. So I've given it a name to uh, mark, designate the area that I'm, I have uh, uh, put here. I pick a minimum scale. This is where uh, map packs should really show their power. This is where you're going to be specifying how much detail you want when you go out into the field. The bigger the number, the less detail. The smaller the number, the more detail. Just like the scales in Terrain Navigator Pro, in fact, you'll see that they are the same as the view display scales. Um, now, when you specify this minimum display scale, um, the more detail, the longer it's going to take to download, and the more disk space it's going to occupy. So you want to be um, careful here when you're picking your display scale. You want to pick something that is going to be um, you know, useful to you if you're you know, out in the field and you really need a, a huge amount of detail, uh, then you need to have a, a small number here. If you need something that isn't uh, so detailed, then a larger number will suffice. For the purposes of our demonstration this morning, I'm going to choose 1856, which is the kind of common display scale in Terrain Navigator Pro. 
So we're going to pick that satellite image. I'm going to hit OK. And it's again, it's going to show me what types of maps that are going to be in this map pack. We've, we're viewing a satellite image. Satellite image is selected. We're going to hit OK. And it's going to download that map pack. Now we're at the Manage Map Pack screen, and you can see the map pack that I have downloaded, Oregon area, and one that I downloaded earlier. Then, how do you use the map pack when you unplug from the internet? You don't have to do anything. You just disconnect from the internet, and uh, Terrain Navigator Pro will automatically use that map pack. There's nothing uh, magic about how to use it. It's already on the hard drive. It's ready to go. So that's the basics of how to make a map pack. And now I will take questions. And I already have one here from Brian. And he asks, when choosing a scale, what is the limiting factor wise to be using on a cell phone without breaking the bank memory wise? Well, first of all, right now we're only dealing with the desktop. Uh, so uh, the cell phone will cover a little bit later. Um, and I'll also um, cover uh, how to determine the size of a map pack on the desktop in, in a minute. Um, but uh, the Basically, what it boils down to is this, as far as the desktop is concerned, we've made it so that you can download a county's wide worth of data for most counties in the United States, with the exception of you know, some of the really huge counties in some of the western states that are bigger than most of our eastern states out this way. Um, anyhow, to be able to download a county's worth of data at between 18,000 and 9,000 scale. So somewhere in that range is what, what we allow to download in one shot. Um, there's, uh, if, uh, you know, when you're downloading all that much data though, it takes an awful long time. So there's a, a, you know, quite a bit of time and it takes up a quite a bit of space. And then if you multiply that across multiple map packs, you're gonna find yourself using disk space quickly. So uh, again, um, map packs are really for getting an area that you know you're gonna use Terrain Navigator Pro offline. Uh, uh, on the desktop or uh, map top. Uh, how do we transmit a map pack to a mobile device? Uh, I will cover mobile devices uh, on the third half of the show, so stay tuned. Uh, another Eastern uh, New England reference there. Uh, anyhow, so yeah, I'll cover map packs on the, th uh, uh, on the mobile device uh, in the third part. Uh, any other questions? Did I miss anything? Let's see. No, nope. okay. So we will continue with map packs on the desktop. Uh, so we've got the uh, map packs available here. To get that window up again, I can always go to the file menu and choose manage map packs. Again, map packs are not tied to a project or anything like that, they are just available. So we've downloaded this Oregon area map pack. And now we can get uh, some um, information about that map pack. We're gonna hit information. And you'll see that it gives me, okay, it contains a satellite image, display scale. So again, how much details in it, when I created it, when I updated it, how much disk space it's occupying and the coordinates of it, okay? There's also an indication here to uh, indicate that the map pack was downloaded successfully. In the event that there was an uh, interruption in the internet connection, it, Terrain Navigator Pro will tell you, hey, I didn't download the whole map pack. And then uh, you can, uh, in fact, update that map pack and, and get the information that you're missing. You'll also notice that when I picked information that the selection tool centered on the map pack that we downloaded. And to make that a little more dramatic, what I'm gonna just do is I'm gonna close out of there and I'm gonna change to uh, USGS Topo and I'm gonna go scroll somewhere else and I'm going to use the selection tool to select something else just so it's not anywhere nearby. All right. So I've used Terrain Navigator Pro for something. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to file manage map packs. Hey, where was that Oregon area map pack? I hit information. Boom. Notice that the selection tool selected that area. It gave me the information on that tool, uh, on, the, on that map pack right there. So you can see what's in a map pack quickly and easily. We also have here the uh, possibility to rename map pack. So let's rename it and we'll call it Oregon area 51. Okay. And we can take a map pack and we can update it. So if there are updates available, 
For certain map types, it will tell you Terrain Navigator Pro will detect that there's an update available. For other map types, uh, there are not uh, that information is not available. So um, if you do use maps offline, you want to update them periodically. Uh, again, using that backpack uh, map in the backpack analogy, it's like printing out a new copy. Okay, you hit update and you can go for it. Uh, we'll skip export and import for a second. We'll just cover delete. Delete uh, obviously removes the map pack from the hard drive, uh, so it will no longer be available for use. Now, import and export. One of the things that uh, we've got a lot of uh, uh, feedback from our uh, folks and friends in, uh, in search and rescue and related uh, emergency management was that uh, oftentimes they would have a, a command center or something to that effect where they would uh, download a, a map pack and then want to transfer it to a bunch of computers that don't have internet connection or it would just be quicker to do it that way. And yeah, under a lot of circumstances, that makes a lot of sense. Or for some of our you know, cu uh, customers that have large deployments of laptops for in the field use, you have an area that a lot of people are using, you wanna download it once and then give it to everybody. That's here how you cover it here with import and export. You can export a map pack into a, uh, into a map pack uh, project or map pack archive, excuse me and then stick that on a thumb drive and then import it into somebody else's um, uh, copy of Terrain Navigator Pro, as long as they have a license for the state that is active. So you can't use this to work around our licensing, I'm sorry. Uh, you can, uh, let's say, go to Echo Lake. I've imported a map pack called Echo, Echo Lake and it's coming in. It imported it. And now let's find out where it is. So I can go Echo Lake and I can choose information. There's Echo Lake and there's the information about the map pack. So like I said, that's very useful uh, for people that need to download large areas and distribute them among an organization. Um, and uh, that's uh, you know, really a part of our commitment to making Train Navigator Pro usable for uh, for people who, who use that, uh, who need that functionality. Uh, let's, let's see, other things. So let's uh, let's do, use this uh, Echo Lake. I'll also call out the Find button here, which closes the window and selects the map pack. Now suppose we were uh, at Echo Lake here and say, well, now we need the area directly to the west. We can right click on the selection tool here, select adjacent area west. Now the selection tool has moved to the west, and now I can right click, create map pack. And now I could do west of Echo Lake. And let's go 18,000 just because. And now I have the Echo Lake map pack, and you'll see there the information and it's there. And now I've got the west of info, uh, west of Echo Lake map pack. So that's how you can quickly get uh, adjacent areas into uh, the map packs. Now the questions that I can already hear flying in people's brains are, well, what if I have an area that already contains that map pack? Does it overlap? Does it use extra disk space? Does it download all that extra stuff? No, it doesn't use any extra disk space. Terrain Navigator Pro manages that all automatically, and it also takes care of the downloading so that it doesn't download stuff that it's already downloaded unless it needs to. So uh, map packs can overlap. You don't have to worry about that, but if you wanted to have, like, set up a, a grid and say, okay, I need these specific uh, areas, uh, we can. Uh, you can just, uh, like, say, start with one map pack and then select a, just adjacent areas. Again, that was also a feature that was added uh, later into Terrain Navigator Pro 11 based on uh, some of uh, your feedback. Uh, I'm also going to show one other thing about selecting uh, an area with map packs. Uh, to make this, to, to illustrate this best, I'm going to use a USGS topo map uh, at the 20 at the 18,000 scale, just so that you can see it. You'll see here we've got the selection tool, but you can also see the quad line, the different, the uh, um, the uh, bottom of a quad sheet here. Um, you know, everyone who's familiar with seven and a half minute quads, and you you know what I'm I'm uh, saying. We've got a lot of people who uh, 
deal with seven and a half minute grids because that's you know the way that the USGS did things for for so many years. So what we're going to do now is we're going to right click and choose select this quad sheet, and you'll see that the selection tool now if I zoom out a little bit has selected the seven and a half minute quad area. Oops, I accidentally resized the selection tool. So I'm going to zoom in, back in, and say select this quad sheet, zoom out. And you'll see it lines up with the quad sheet. And now I could say, okay, let's go to a street map, for example, right click, create map pack, and now we can make a street map of 36,000 scale that matches a seven and a half minute quad. So that covers um, basically everything uh, we have on the desktop side for map packs when you need to use Terrain Navigator Pro on a laptop, again, out in the field. Uh, I will just cover one uh, additional tip that if you are using Terrain Navigator Pro without an internet connection, I do generally recommend going to the preferences. Uh, I should do this uh, again slower. The file menu, choosing preferences, internet access and map cache. And there's an option here to allow Terrain Navigator Pro to connect to the internet. If you turn that off, then Terrain Navigator Pro is not going to keep trying to connect to the internet while it's trying to start and while it's trying to run. That will definitely improve your performance. Um, I get a lot of questions about that. And the, the uh, flip side, of course, is that when you're back online, be sure you turn that option back on again. All right, so do we have any questions about how to uh, make map packs on the desktop. Okay, Sean, if you do not do anything when you unplug for the internet, why create one and not just one with the TPA you have saved before mission referring to SAR work? Okay, uh, TPA, I, 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 I may need a little bit of clarification on this, Sean. A TPA is a terrain project archive, at least that's what I'm thinking of. So uh, terrain projects do not contain map packs. Again, they are two separate entities. So uh, a map pack is of a uh, of an area. It is not a collection of markers, routes, tracks, uh, range rings, all that sort of stuff that you would find in a terrain project. So uh, basically, you're drawing those markers, routes, tracks, range rings, labels. You're drawing those on top of the maps, and in essence, on top of the map pack. So you could have multiple projects that cover the same area. Uh, and then you could have a map pack that doesn't cover any of the areas that you're using for projects. Uh, I think that's the question that I, I, I've got from you. If I didn't explain that properly, please uh, respond. Jan, hi, Jan. Uh, is it possible to download several map packs, i.e. specific counties in a local area, at detailed number from a used memory standpoint? Is there a limit? Um, you can only download one map pack at a time, but as far as Terrain Navigator Pro is concerned, as long as your subscription is current, download as much as you want. Uh, we do have a, a limit on the uh, the size, you know, to make it basically a county. That's just to keep Terrain Navigator Pro from not blowing up, to be honest with everybody. Um, because, you know, once you get into that amount of data, uh, you're talking gigs and gigs and gigs of data. Um, you know, computers, you know, the, the, it, you got to give them a little bit of a, a break, especially Internet connections. They can get wonky. Um, so um, yeah, that's why there, there are limits to the amount of data that you can download, but it's not because of any sort of additional fee that you ha might have to pay or uh, limitations on bandwidth or anything of that nature. Uh, I do know that that's an issue for some of our other uh, competitors. Uh, any plans to add an ability to freehand the selected from map pack instead of just a box? Uh, no, because uh, map packs, at least at this point, really do need to be rectangular. Um, it gets uh, not to get too much into the nitty gritty of Terrain Navigator Pro, but we're talking internally about map tiles, and they are rectangles, and they get you know it, it's a lot easier in Terrain Navigator Pro to to make things in bounding boxes that are rectangular. So the internals are really get really crazy if you're not dealing with uh, rectangles. So uh, no plans at this time. Uh, and probably not. Uh, that said, if 
people do have suggestions about Terrain Navigator Pro on map packs or anything in general, go to our website. There's that feedback forum. I read that feedback forum as soon as something comes in. Uh, and uh, if it's something that we can do, I put it right in our uh, to-do list. If it's something we can, uh, we have to wait on, which is most likely the case, um, then uh, we uh, uh, keep uh, reviewing that list every time we uh, evaluate what we're working on for Terrain Navigator Pro. So, uh, and there's a way you can vote for features. Just because a feature has a lot of votes doesn't mean we're going to do it, but it does give us an idea of what we should be working towards. Um, and just because a feature doesn't have any votes doesn't mean we're not going to do it either, because sometimes that's just a really good idea and it's really easy to do. Uh, there's been a lot of features that have come into Terrain Navigator Pro over the last 20 years that have been, gee, the why didn't we think of that and just throw, the, throw it in? Uh, so by, by all means, if you have uh, features you'd like to see us add or improve, put that in the feedback forum. Okay, we set up a project and save it, but when I go to the field and, uh, and go. Okay, so again, yeah, so if you're gonna set up a project and uh, you know, we'll probably do a, a webinar on projects in the future because that's a, a topic that uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion about, but, uh, uh, when you set up a project, you set, you're, you're, you're putting together your areas, your, not an area per se, you're putting together markers, routes, tracks, things that are drawn on the maps. So uh, projects are not the same as map packs. Map packs are not the same as projects. To clarify, when I get a call, I open TMP and open some, set up some polygons, range ring, save it, and when I go to the field, to keep to it. Never had an issue to keep going if I was connected to the internet. That's correct. So as long as you are connected to the internet, you don't need map packs. It's really only if you're going to be offline. Um, is one of the scale options for map packs 1 in 24,000? No, because it's a display scale. The display scales in Terrain Navigator Pro, while you can put in 24,000 here, and we can certainly do that, and for those who didn't realize, you can just type into this um, scale control up here. Now, if I really wanted 20,050 or 20,020, I can put whatever scale I want in here. But these are the scales that Terrain Navigator Pro is gonna display best and quickest, okay? For example, you'll see this street map. You can pretty easily read the National Forest Development Road 2823. Let's change it to 1850. And you'll see it. the text got really, really blurry just by changing that scale a little bit. So those, that's why these display scales are set the way they are. They're really optimized to make Terrain Navigator Pro perform at its best. You can type any scale you want in here, but uh, you know, these are the ones that we recommend. And there's an article that's on our website that talks about this. If you haven't seen um, the article on, um, you know, basically why did we change everything in TNP 11, um, there's a, a discussion there about map scales and what to use and to what conditions. Uh, and there's also a topic on that in the help. So um, definitely check that out if that's something that uh, you have a question about. Now, getting back to a map pack though, when you right click and you're gonna say create a map pack, you're defining a minimum scale. In other words, this is the smallest scale. So if you wanted to display something at 24,000, you would wanna set a minimum scale of 1856. And again, these numbers also correspond to the internal file structures in Terrain Navigator Pro and what the scales work out if you have a monitor at 96 DPI and all kinds of complicated math that we don't need to get into. But the important thing is that this is a minimum scale. So by picking 18,000, you're going to get everything above. And you're going to get nothing below. All right. And that ends the questions so far. So if we have... Any other questions about the desktop software? If something comes up, I'll be happy to take those questions at the end. But now we'll move on to the map packs on the mobile device. So just give me a second here to switch to mobile, and we will go from there. Uh, let's see.
There we go. All right, now we are in Terrain Navigator Pro Mobile. And uh, you know, if you're not familiar with the mobile app, of course you can download it from um, the uh, iTunes Store or from Google Play. Uh, basically, what uh, the mobile app allows you to do is use Terrain Navigator Pro as a, uh, you know, excuse me, use your mobile device as a handheld GPS in the field, and then that information can um, be synchronized back to the uh, desktop software through project synchronization, which I will not cover uh, today. If uh, we have questions about project synchronization, uh, we can certainly do a uh, webinar on projects and project synchronization at a later date. Um, same principles apply. If you're using the phone and you're in an urban environment or an area where there's a lot of cell phone towers and that sort of thing, you don't need to worry about map facts. You don't, uh, the phone is just gonna download whatever information it needs and use it when it uses it. However, we know, especially in, in some of our, our uh, rural customers, that's not always the case. Um, and uh, so you need to have a map pack if you're going to use the mobile app out in the field. Same principle applies. You download it when you have an internet connection, and then it just uses it when, it, uh, when uh, it's offline. To make a map pack, I'm going to hit the menu button in Terrain Pro Mobile and choose map packs. Here is a list of the map packs that are on the device. There are also map packs that are purchased. I'll just talk about that briefly. That refers to map packs that were generated for those who have that additional parcel data subscription. Um, those are map packs that have uh, preset parcel boundaries on them, uh, land ownership. Uh, so if you've got that uh, additional subscription, then uh, you have that option to download those parcel data through purchase map packs. Since that's not the, the majority, we won't cover that. Instead, we're going to talk about the uh, map packs that are on the device. You'll see that I have uh, downloaded some custom map packs. We're going to create a new one now. Down in the lower uh, uh, lower uh, part of the screen, you'll see custom maps plus. We're going to press that to create a map pack or a custom map pack. Very similar to the desktop, you'll get a bounding box. You can scroll it around. Move it around. You can zoom out. And we're defining the area of the map pack. So we're going to get this little city or uh, town or whatever this is. The, uh, it looks like uh, Brady, uh, who was going to have a good year this year. Again, my New England, New England bias is showing. All right, so map packs. We are making a map pack. Up here, we're going to uh, we've set the area. Up here at the top, you just define the zoom level, okay? Rather than scale in, in the mobile app, we use zoom levels. The higher the zoom level, the more detail. And you'll also see right there at the top how much space is gonna take up by that map pack. The higher level the zoom, the more space. Show that again. Map types. You get to pick what map type you want in the map pack, and you can select any of the map types. However, unlike the desktop where the topo maps are preloaded, the mobile app does not have preloaded topo maps. Nothing is preloaded. Everything comes through the web as you need it. So you may want to download the topo map. So we're going to choose that in this case. We're going to keep the topo map as, as a map pack type, although we could pick any of these types. Hit OK. Down at the bottom, we can pick a name of a map pack, and we're going to call it Brady. And we're going to hit Done. And you'll see it is downloading the map pack. And it's done. The map pack is now available for use in Terrain Navigator Pro on the mobile app. So it's pretty uh, pretty similar to the, the desktop um, in that the, except that the selection is done while you're creating the map pack, not before. And uh, that is the basics of how to make a map pack on the mobile. Any questions so far?
I don't see any new questions. Uh, okay, uh, if I download a track to the map pack on the PC, will it show up on the mobile devices? Okay, tracks are in projects. Projects are not map packs. So, um, the, if you download a track in the, if you create a track in a project, it's going to be available whether or not there's a map pack to display it on. Um, I, I, again, I'm trying to, I, I haven't come up with a really good analogy for this. The, the, the nap, uh, map in the knapsack doesn't quite work, but uh, let's, it's, it's, when, Think of it this way. Uh, you can print out your map and put it in your knapsack, and then you could also have a guidebook, and the guidebook could tell you where to go. They're two different things. You don't necessarily need the guidebook, and you don't necessarily need the map. But if you want to navigate on the map using the guidebook, they would use, you could use them together. They're two different things. Tracks are part of projects. That's your guidebook. That's what you're navigating to, on, and around. The map pack or the map is the base thing that you're drawing all this stuff on top of. So, uh, so if you created a project and used project synchronization, it would show up on the on the on the mobile device. And if you have a multi-user account and all that other fun stuff, uh, which is all included, if you put you know put everybody in the same organization, and if you're not set up that way, you've got you know two or three people using Terrain Navigator Pro, and they've all got different accounts. Uh, let us know. We'll be able to combine those for you. Uh, you do have to combine into a single organization, but uh, then you can share those projects. You can uh, see where everybody is and all that sort of fun stuff. Um, but uh, again, that's all based on the project or in, in, in the example here, tracks. Um, so uh, map packs are separate from all that. That's what you draw on. Uh, the one thing that you cannot do with a mobile app that you can do with the desktop is share map packs among each other. So there's no way to, let's say, download a map pack on one device and email it to everybody else. Uh, it's, it's just not uh, one of the features we've had it added yet. Um, and uh, you can't take a map pack that you've downloaded on the desktop and somehow transfer that set of maps directly to the phone. They'd have to be downloaded separately. Again, they're in a different file format, not to get into the, the, you know, the weeds of uh, how you know, Android is different than iPhone, which is different than PCs. You know, basically, you have to funnel and get that stuff down onto each platform individually. Uh, let's see if we've got any questions. For the mobile app, do you have a separate license? For no. The uh, question is, do you need a separate license for the mobile app? No, your license for Terrain Navigator Pro for, during the duration of Terrain Navigator Pro does include a license for the desktop software on a primary and a backup computer and on the mobile app uh, on a primary and a secondary mobile device. So there is no additional licensing as long as it's you yourself using it. You can't give that like you can't say, well, I'm going to use it and my friend's going to use it under the same license. No, that uh, that uh, doesn't work. So, uh, but the idea though is you can use Train Navigator Pro uh, across all platforms, on, across your desktop, across your uh, mobile devices. You can even log into your Train Navigator Pro website and uh, use uh, see your projects and your maps there. Back to Jan. Okay, she's got the question. She Okay, so uh, let's see if we have any other questions about um, the map packs on the phone. I'll cover just a couple of advanced things of map packs on the phone. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go back here. And uh, where map packs and projects do intersect is that you want to create, you may want to create a map pack that covers an area of a project. And on the mobile app, we have a, a feature to do that. We're going to go to menu and we're going to choose uh, all projects here. And these are all the projects that are in this particular account. I'm just going to pick one here at random, the Sam Pace project. And you'll see that it's got markers and tracks and routes in it. There's a button here at the top, make map packs from project. What that's going to allow you to do is make a map pack that covers the exact same area of the markers, tracks, and routes on this project. So we are going to make map pack from project. 
And we're going to see that that's not a very good idea because this particular project has a marker down here in uh, Mississippi and a marker up here in New Hampshire. So that would be one heck of a map pack. And in fact, it tells you that the size up there is going to be 481 gigabytes. So that's not going to work. So we won't use that project. We will go back. And let's try the crossbound uh, training project here. Okay, this one's just got a single track in it. We're going to choose main, make map project. Map pack from project. Ah, it's a very small area. In fact, I'd say that it's probably too small. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out a little bit and say, okay, we want a map pack that covers the area roughly around this track. And again, we can pick the map pi map types. Let's say we want hybrid, and we don't want topo. We want aerial map. Okay. We want a zoom level of 16. It's going to take up 5.3 megabytes. It's already named it for me. I'm going to hit done. And it's downloading that map pack now. And of course, here under the map pack screen, you can um, change the name of the map pack and you can also delete them. And that is really the uh, uh, easiest way to make a map pack for a particular project. So, and that really covers also uh, everything about map packs on the mobile app. So, are there any other questions about anything I've covered about map packs or about anything uh, that uh, you think we should, uh, I should have covered as far as map packs are concerned? Do map packs on the mobile device use internal memory or can they put on the external uh, storage such as SD card? Um, the map packs are going to use whatever the app has been specified within the operating system to use. So for those who have Android devices, sorry Apple, and have uh, specified to use the, put the app on the SD card, then the uh, storage is going to be on the SD card as well. And uh, I did cover the uh, map packs on the Android device. The iPhone is virtually the same. If cell, phone is, uh, cell service is in and out in the field, does the app switch back and forth between access the online map versus the map pack? Um, the way the algorithm works in, on the desktop and on the phone is basically it says, I need a map for this area. And then it checks to see if there's a map in a map pack first. If it can use the map pack, it's going to use that first. And that's going to save it from having to try to query the servers. Uh, and, and, and give you a little bit of a performance boost, whether or not you have um, a um, internet connection. So it's going to prefer whatever has been used on the map pack first. Uh, that's why you do want to update your map packs uh, periodically. Uh, can the map packs be geo-referenced? The map packs are geo-referenced. They are automatically available as geo-referenced uh, into the Terrain Navigator Pro so that they're, they're, uh, they appear automatically. There's no geo-referencing, that a, a, additional geo-referencing that can be, uh, can be uh, applied to them. A related question to that, though, may be if you wanted to import a geo-referenced map into Terrain Navigator Pro that is not one of these map types, uh, the answer to that is uh, with the, uh, the desktop software, the base subscription allows the import of GeoTIFFs and that uh, add-on, uh, sites add-on that uh, we had the first webinar on allows you to bring in basically anything, geo-reference it and use it on the desktop and on the mobile. So if that uh, is interesting, uh, check out um, the other webinar and the email that uh, the video, there's a YouTube channel for uh, Terrain Navigator Pro. There's a nice uh, presentation that uh, one of my colleagues put together on uh, the sites add-on for those who want to bring other map types into Terrain Navigator Pro and then view them on their mobile devices. Do we have any other questions? If not, I'm just going to uh, wrap up by saying uh, that uh, with the um, With map packs, if you uh, ha they are included with the base subscription of Terrain Navigator Pro, you don't have to purchase anything else to use map packs or the mobile 
the mobile app that's all included with the annual subscription of $240 per state per year. Um, and, uh, and there are discounts for search and rescue groups. I know there are a lot of search and rescue people here. Um, you know, you can call for the details on that. Uh, but uh, the base subscription is uh, you know, sold per state and there's discounts if you have multiple users in multiple uh, states involved, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, at any rate, that's the, you know, that's what's included. It's part of all of the, um, of the whole whole thing. Can a map pack be shared with a non-subscriber for a short time frame? No, unfortunately, you can't do that. Um, you know, we have to uh, we have to keep our, our you know make the, the the numbers work to keep uh, everyone working here. So no, there's no way to do um, uh, like a trial of a map pack or something to that effect. We do offer, of course, a free trial of Terrain Navigator Pro. You can you know anyone who has not tried Terrain Navigator Pro can try it free for seven days. Uh, and there's no um, commitment to making that trial. You download it, you use it. Uh, it's not going to automatically charge your credit card after seven days. Uh, so you just uh, it will just stop working, or you can choose to renew it. So um, that is that with the map packs. I think that may cover all the questions. I bought a new map pack. How do I get TNP to that device? That is a whole other topic. Bill, why don't you uh, send an email to TNP support at trimble.com? Uh, and um, just ask that same question, and I will be happy to direct you to how to install Terrain Navigator Pro on a new device. Tommy asks, can I export a map pack and import it to another license? Yes, yes. Again, that was one of the things that's covered. Uh, let's see if I can. Uh, oh, I should have screen. And all right and if i did this right yep okay so we're back here in terrain navigator pro desktop uh the question was export from desktop oh and import to mobile no okay um yeah so again you can import and export on the desktop to desktop under manage map packs i can export it or i can import a new one those are from desktop to desktop within licensed copies of Terrain Navigator Pro, not necessarily within the same organization. Um, you know, so if somebody, you know, somebody wanted to make a website and make a whole pile of map packs and let everyone download them, that's, a, that's fine with me. Uh, but they wouldn't be usable unless you have a valid license. And that's desktop to desktop. But going from desktop to mobile, no, there are different formats. The the whole file structure underneath is is different, so they can't they can't be brought from desktop to uh, Android or to iPhone or from Android to iPhone or any of that those combinations. But just desktop to desktop. Uh, I had a question back here. Is uh, you need that email address? The email address for Terrain Navigator Pro support is TNP support. at trimble.com there is there it is in the chat window right there tnp support at trimble.com uh, if you have any questions with terrain navigator pro map packs or anything uh feel free to reach us uh that's what we're here for um you can give us a call uh, and uh we're, we're happy to take calls too um you know if you get our voicemail you know leave us a message we do call back as soon as we can we don't have a big call center we just take calls when we can and um, then uh, the uh, email is also a great way to get a hold of us. You know, we try to get we try to answer everyone within an hour or so, uh, as best we can, uh, to uh, TNP support at mytopo. Excuse me, TNP support at trimble .com. Um, Yeah, please don't try to email anything at mytopo. That won't work. Uh, so TNP support at trimble .com. Uh, Unless there are any other questions. I want to thank everybody for coming. I know I see a lot of people have dropped off. Uh, we will uh, have a recording of the um, uh, of the webinar available. I got a comment here from Bob to can you do new, continue to do the webinars? Yes, we will. Uh, we, we've got a number of them scheduled. If you have some ideas that you would like us to do webinars on, just again email TNP support at my at uh, trimble.com. Be happy to uh, consider those uh, those uh, things uh, you know topics. Uh, and uh, you know, help us help everyone use Terrain Navigator Pro. I know it's a, a tool that uh, you know there's a there's a lot of depth to the product, and uh, we want to make sure everyone can use it as well as they can.
Um, so uh, that's that's that. Uh, the webinar is re has been recorded. We'll put it up on our YouTube site uh, if you want to review anything there. We're also working on a, uh, a short presentation on map packs uh, as well. Uh, so check out our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, thanks everyone for coming. I appreciate it.